you're almost on what I would call a flying carpet. It's a completely different vantage point. All of a sudden, like Alice in Wonderland, through the keyhole and you're in a magical place. There's New York City all around, and there you are. It's the wheat fields of Kansas. It's an alpine meadow. It's, it's magic. The High Line is this very mysterious ribbon, and the idea of restoring it and creating a park out of it, it's just a beautiful, romantic, and very aesthetic idea. Here you have a, you know, a defunct industrial corridor turning into, you know, the Dia Art Center and the High Line and the fashion shops on 14th Street. It's totally unexpected. There's nothing like the High Line anywhere in the world. You see a slice of the city that connects you to it and disconnects you from it. And it makes you fall in love with the city all over again. The High Line's a good idea. We don't have anything like it in this city. It would add greenery and a chance for people to think in an area that's basically big buildings and concrete. I realized that I had walked underneath it countless times and had no idea that it was here. It's, it's a strange structure in that way. I think that there's a lot of New Yorkers that don't even really realize that it exists. And when I finally got the opportunity to step out here, I was just completely blown away. My dream, which I think is actually going to be realized quite soon, is to walk up here with my two children. Walking in this magical place that's sort of tucked away and has a hint of the past, but a, I don't know, a sense of the future as well. I can't think of a better addition to a history lesson on New York City than going up on the High Line. You can almost close your eyes for a second and think you see the horse-drawn carriages delivering the meat around. In the mid-1850s, the Hudson River Railroad laid tracks between Albany and Lower Manhattan. It ran down the middle of 10th Avenue, and they called it Death Avenue because so many people were run over by the train. Every train had to be preceded by somebody on a horseback waving a red flag. He was called the West Side Cowboy. Finally, they settled on what they would do. They would raise the tracks between the blocks, not over the street. The railroad cars would come in at the third story in all these buildings. Meanwhile, the streets are free for the rest of us. But we use trucks now, and this went out of use by 1980. There was a, an area of manufacturers of warehouses of shipping originally, and they didn't think about parks. And then it became residential, and suddenly people are saying, oops, where are the parks? We are, I think, 58 out of 59 in community boards for having the least park space in the city. Where we're standing right now in the heart of the meatpacking district is the very first place that people enter up onto the High Line. It connects three neighborhoods, the meatpacking district, West Chelsea, which is full of art galleries, and then the Hudson Yards, Hell's Kitchen neighborhood above that. You know, it's something that people have really gotten behind. It's a source of, of optimism for the neighborhood. We have an opportunity here for this seven acres. This can be our generation's Central Park. It's the kind of thing that, like Central Park, it enhances community. It fosters like chance encounters and reflection and contemplation and taking a new perspective on your city. Central Park is a 19th century wonder. What do we have in the 21st century in the way of park opportunities? Well, certainly nothing like 843 acres, but we have the High Line. Will it look like Central Park? No, it's not a refuge from the city, it's part of Lower Manhattan, and that's a wonderful thing. When you invest in parks, you actually see an enormous benefit that will more than pay the cost of the investment, and that's what we're here to do, is we're here to make investments in the future of the city, and we think the High Line is just a terrific investment in our future. Today, we launch the transformation of the High Line, which will become one of the most iconic urban parks ever. Today, there are 27 major developments planned in the High Line area, designed by some of the greatest architects in the world. Uh, this is going to be a magical experience for everybody. This is going to be something that will bring people to this neighborhood, that will enhance values, that will improve our quality of life. And I think it's just another example of the vitality and ingenuity of New Yorkers. To envision an entirely new kind of park in an extraordinary city, in a place that really is undergoing a renaissance. 
and the whole city changes before our eyes so that the next few decades will be even better. What a great thing. What a great idea. The truth is, is that long after we're gone, uh, this will be here. The one thing we should all take out today is that dreams come true. What we're trying to do is use great design to create a great new public space that'll be a legacy for future generations of New Yorkers to enjoy. This thing could become something extraordinary in four years or five years, not 40 or 50 years. And the fact that you can attach yourself to this thing that will actually become something that you can take your kid to, that I can take my son to, is really, really fun. It's a great gift that we're going to leave, that we're going to borrow from an early generation, clean up in ours, and hand the one that follows us. That, you don't get that opportunity very often.